Hello. Hey, good morning. It is wonderful to see you. Just a couple of announcements this morning. Let me pull them out of my pocket. Uh, okay. Uh, May 18th, we got it uh, about a month away. May 18th, there will be a veterans breakfast at the Elevate building behind the mall at 0800. Veterans breakfast. All veterans are welcomed and encouraged to attend. Uh, Brother Tristan actually will be speaking that morning. So put that on your calendar, veterans. Come out, support him, support the veteran community, and I have no doubt that it will be a blessing to you. Um, also, this evening, there will be no choir practice this evening or church this evening. Um, we have Academy of Arts starting tomorrow morning, first thing. Uh, and so a lot of, uh, all of, church staff and school faculty will be putting in crazy hours. And uh, so Pastor wanted to make sure that they had a time to rest and just get ready for the intense week, okay? With that being said, don't forget... We'll have performances at the end of the week. There's girls are selling tickets out just out in the foyer. So make sure you stop by, get some tickets, get some for friends, family, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a blessing. I w wasn't here last year, but I got to see it online, and uh, it was wonderful. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing it live and being a part, and I want you as well, okay? I want you to look forward to it. So with all of that work um, and busyness going in this week, uh, no services or choir practice this evening. However, we will get together Wednesday, 6.30, over at the school. I forgot to double check. We're still doing Wednesday, though. Okay. So, I should have, I apologize. I should have asked first. But uh, we will do uh, 6.30 at the school, normal Bible studies like usual, Okay. One last thing, we do have a special birthday this morning, a very special birthday, um, arguably one of the sweetest ladies I've met, uh, Ms. Clark is 93 today, 93. <laughs> How exciting is that? So I think it only fitting, she might, I might be in trouble with her later on, but I think it's only fitting that we sing happy birthday to her. Happy birthday to you. It is wonderful. Thank you for helping out. We're going to ask the men and boys to come and meet Pastor at the front. All right. I'm excited to be here today. Are you? Glad to be in the house of God. Let's, let's uh, what we're doing here is inviting you to come to the, to the altar and let's begin by praying. I found out a long time ago that an invitation should come at the beginning of the service, not at the end. Because you want God to speak to you, right? You want him to talk to you. So you, you uh, clean your heart, ask God to cleanse you. That's what baptism is all about. We'll be talking about that in a minute. So uh, let's, let's ask God to forgive us of our sins and wash our minds and focus on him for a few minutes, okay? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together and preach the word and listen to the preaching of the word and to sing uh, worship songs. God, I pray that you put your hand on everything that's done in this building this morning. If there's anyone here that's never put their trust in you, they don't know what it's about, God, I, I hope that it'll be clear to them today and uh, that they would respond to the call of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that um, you would uh, speak through us, to us, in us, with us. I pray, Father, that the songs that we sing will, will praise you, Lord. That's what we want to do. And uh, I ask that you'd accept them as a sacrifice of our lips. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. If you're a child here today under the age of 12, a uh, couple of things you need to know. First of all, you get an opportunity to help take up the children's change offering. That's the only offering we take in the auditorium. If you want to give, there's boxes out there. If you want to give to the ministry of the church. This is for children's ministry and missions. So the kids will come around. Come on up, kids. 
The other thing I want you guys to know is that this morning you're not going to junior church. You're going to stay here and watch people get put under the water and maybe brought back up again. You're, <laughs> come ahead. Get these cups. Let's go gather some change, all right? Testing one, two. Are you ready, Briley? She's ready. The last one. You guys ready? You know what we're going to sing? What do you think we're going to sing? Make a wild guess. Jesus loves me. There you go. You going to hold the microphone? Father, bless these kids for being a, a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord, that they're serving you this morning, and I pray that you'd help them to see and understand what baptism's all about, help them to understand what salvation's all about, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. All righty, we're going to sing some songs now. The first one's 812 if you want your book, 812 Victory in Jesus. Then we're going to go to Blessed Assurance, page 51. And then My Faith has found a resting place, number one. Would you all stand? It's also going to be shown up here on the screen. On that first verse, you ready? I heard an old, old story how a Savior came.
salvation by my Savior's name, salvation through the blood. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. My great physician. trembles at your name surrounded on a throne of endless praise fire and lightning flash from the glory of your face and I sing to you you are
You're holy God, you're holy Lord. You are holy Lord. on here yeah there we go so you say well that's over and over again the same line you are holy that's what they say before the throne thou art worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and praise and they say it over and over and over and over and over and over again that's all they say thou art worthy O lord when we think about god and what he's done for us isn't it amazing so i uh, i mentioned you last week i was thinking about jumping in here and preaching from here it created two problems for me one was if I use the microphone so you can hear something besides the Holy Spirit might be coming down while I'm standing in the water. You might see an actual lightning bolt or something and uh, then no, well, that would be cool. Uh, not sure if you want to have a funeral immediately following the service for the pastor. So uh, the other thing is I did not want to drop my Bible in the water. And so I was concerned about that and the third thing that really caused me some consternation was i don't know if i can stand still while i'm preaching and that would kind of hedge me in just a bit so we're going to have the baptism here in a second but before we do and i'll, I'll release those who are going to get baptized i'll tell you in a minute you sit here and listen and then i'll let you guys go we're going to sing another song or two before we before we baptize them okay i want you to turn in your bibles if you would to romans chapter six romans chapter six and uh I hope that I can help you understand something about baptism. We, I, w I, I, wish I, I wish I could have spent a month on this topic because there's so much in the Bible about it. But I want you to understand something about baptism. Maybe you've never understood before why we even do it. And uh, we're going to try to, we, we spent some time last week. If you want to go back and study what we did last week, go watch it on YouTube. You can find out what it's about um, some more. But here's this, this is a follow-up. Um, just to explain what exactly is going on here. In Romans chapter 6, it says in verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Let me just, for those of you that are getting baptized, remember the point of baptism is coming up out of the water, just so you know. Uh, it's coming up out. That's a picture of the resurrected life that we're supposed to be living for Christ. It's a choice that you've made. You've decided to follow Christ in this way, and you want to live a life that is a resurrected life. We'll talk about what that means in just a second. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, that's what baptism is, is a picture of, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Again, that's what baptism is a picture of, the resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being dead, raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's bow for prayer. Father, please help us now as we try to make this understandable. Lord, there's people here that have witnessed hundreds of baptisms they believe they know what baptism means. And Lord, I just pray that you give them a fresh look again this morning to remind them of what the Christian life is really about. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Acts is a historical account of the church. So stay with me here. Um, it, has, it has 12 stories about baptism. I'm not going to go through them all this morning. We're not really even going to spend time on that. But I want you to know there are 12 stories about baptism. 12 different events through the book of Acts that explain how the early church baptized and what they did. 
in Acts chapter 1, I want you to go there. In Acts chapter 1, verse 5, he specifically says something. He sets the tone for baptism as a Christian. Acts chapter 1, verse 5, he says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with what? Say it. Holy Ghost, not many days since. Now, John, John the Baptist, when he was baptizing by repentance, he said, I'm baptizing you by water, but there's one coming after me who's mightier than me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He's telling us, John's telling us, that there's a difference between water baptism and the Holy Ghost baptism. There's a difference between the two. And Jesus then reiterates that here in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. All through the book of Acts, you'll find then the understanding of what baptism is and what it means. You'll start seeing it unfold. Um, one of the reasons you guys need a pastor. Let me tell you why you need a preacher. Everyone can study the word of God for themselves. I get that. The Holy Spirit's in all of us when we're, when we're saved. I get that. Well, one of the reasons you need church is because you need a pastor. You need somebody who will spend their time in the word of God trying to sort out Verses like Acts 2.38 and figure out what it means. So Acts 2.38 is uh, some churches take that out of its context. And they say in verse 38, uh, it says here, Then said Peter unto them, or said Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There are churches out there that teach that water baptism is necessary for repentance and for salvation. That to be saved, you must be dunked under the water. Okay? And so they take that verse completely out of its context, and people say, well, that's what it says. Well, it does say that. It does say that. Before we're done here today, you'll understand what that means maybe, hopefully. That's the goal. See, what happened was Peter was still understanding what John was doing. John was baptizing by water by repentance. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Say that with me. John's baptism was a baptism of what? Repentance. It was repentance getting ready for Jesus Christ. It was a Jewish baptism, and it was necessary. Now, Jesus, Jesus talked about different baptisms. He said, I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Remember when James and John came, and the, the mother said, I want one to sit on one side and one to sit on the other. Remember that? And Jesus said, um, are you able to be baptized with a baptism that I'm baptized with? And they said, yes, we are able. What was he talking about? It wasn't Holy Spirit baptism because he was already full of the Holy Spirit. He was talking about his suffering. He was talking about his crucifixion. So the crucifixion was a baptism as well. In fact, there's different kinds of baptisms, many different kinds of baptisms. And so Jesus differentiated. It's not all water baptism. It's not all baptism by immersion into water. Okay. But John set a mode of baptism for us that the early church continued that method, but it changed its meaning. Uh, it, we didn't, it didn't mean baptism of repentance for salvation anymore. Peter still thought it did, Acts 2.38. By chapter 8, we begin to see a distinction between the two baptisms. Chapter 8, they're baptized by water but didn't get the Holy Spirit. Chapter 9, they're baptized by the Holy Spirit and hadn't been baptized by water yet. Like, whoa, 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 wait. God starts dividing the two and showing us there's a difference between the two. The church continued to practice water baptism, but they began by the end of chapter 8, or by the end of the book of Acts, they began to understand that baptism by water was not the commitment itself, was not the salvation experience itself. It was a picture of the resurrected life. It was a decision to follow Jesus Christ and it was a physical picture to help us understand how to live a life of faith. Baptisms began to be practicing, practiced following the choice to believe in Acts 18. Go there with me. Acts 18. By the end of the book, end of chapter of, of the book of Acts, we have in verse 8, And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord Jesus, or the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. So their baptism came after their belief. You see that? 
So baptism became important after you believe. Now, some churches teach that you should baptize babies. Some people think they've been saved their whole life, been Christians their whole life because they were baptized when they are babies. Baptism, we begin to understand by the end of the book of Acts that baptism is about believing and it's a picture of that belief and a picture of the life you're supposed to live of Christ. Now, let me show you the last, the last verse in the book of Acts that deals with baptism. The last word on baptism is Acts 22, verse 16, and it gives us a clue on what baptism is all about. Acts 22, verse 16, and now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. This is a this gives us a clue of what baptism is about. Does baptism, does water baptism wash away your sins? If it did, every time you got a shower, your sins would be gone. Right? No. Every time you took a bath, your sins would be gone. Every time you jumped in the swimming pool, your sins would be gone. No. It's not that. A physical act does not do anything spiritual. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So spiritual baptism is the only thing that accomplishes anything spiritual. Physical baptism does something physical. It gives us a picture of something. And he talks about washing away your sins by calling upon the name of the Lord. Let's go back to Romans 6 again real quick. This has all been introductory to what I want to show you. And the, in, the message itself is simple and short. Romans chapter 6 again, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like, it's like, see, that's the picture, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk, it's about our walk, in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his death resurrection when Paul said in Philippians not having mine own righteousness but the righteousness which is of God by faith I want you, I want you to understand this this is really important what's the difference between the righteousness of the law and the righteousness which is of God by faith What's the difference? When Colossians chapter 2, verse 20, he explains the righteousness of the law. Let me show you what it is. Colossians 2, verse 20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, is, why as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Watch this. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Oh, man, I hope you understand this. The righteousness of the law is don't touch. The Pharisees, what do they, what do, they do? Can't touch that dead body because it'll defile me, right? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, my goodness. Our churches have gotten back into legalism. What is legalism? Legalism is touch not, taste not, handle not. Don't touch that, don't taste that, don't handle that. In other words, if I were to walk up uh, by something, the righteousness of the law is if I were to walk by something that was dirty and that dirt would come up on me, I would be defiled. To stay holy then, I had to stay away from anything that would defile me. This was a problem for me when I was a kid. I, I, I remember one specific time, my, my parents, of course, my dad was a pastor, and so we lived in a trailer house behind the church. And we would have visiting missionaries and so on come. And my job was always to entertain the missionary kids. Well, 
The problem with that is that I was a country kid. I grew up in the country, and entertaining myself might include paint. It might include wood. For sure is going to include a tree. I remember, uh, remember this one particular time. It sticks out in my mind as a, as a very critical time. I think I thought I was close to death at that moment uh, when my parents found out. The missionary kids came to visit us, and we had on the property oil-based paint. Now, there was a guy living on the property helping take care of the grounds, and every, all the paint that he had was oil-based, all of it wasn't water-based, it was oil-based. Anybody familiar with oil-based paint? Do you know how easy it is to clean off? It's just really easy, right? Only if you have gasoline, right? And then you smell like gasoline. So the missionary kid's there, and I was involved in a project. Well, the project was I was building an airplane, and I was building it out of some two-by-tens that had been laying around in the back behind the shed, and I was mad because I had taking the plane up on the shed and somebody caught me before I could fly it off. So we were climbing, we were taking it up into the tree and uh, because I didn't want anybody to catch us. We were going to hide in the leaves and fly it out of the tree was the goal. All right. But before we flew it, to make sure it was aerodynamic, it had to be painted in the only paint we had, which was oil-based gray. Navy ship gray. Where we got it, I have no idea. So, missionary kids there, I'm really busy, busy, busy building this airplane, trying to get it done. The only thing to do entertaining the missionary kid was to give him a paintbrush and let him help me in his good clothes. It didn't really matter. We got called in to supper. <laughs> we were covered in oil-based paint from head to toe. Uh, and needless to say, we all got in trouble. I'm happy to say that I have a very similar story. When I was a pastor and my boys were young, that they took a missionary kid in white pants out into the woods, and that missionary never came back to my house ever again, and I was so happy. It was a blessing. The thing I noticed about being an adult versus being a child is children are absolute dirt magnets. As you get older, you can learn how to keep yourself from getting dirty. But there are some jobs, no matter what you do, you're still going to get dirty, right? Yesterday, I was painting something in my garage, and I put gloves on to keep the paint off of me. When I was a kid, I, I would have wiped the paint on my pants. I mean, it wasn't a thing. As you get older and more mature, you learn to stay away from certain things. However, what's necessary to stay clean is we, what we call showers, baths, washing at the sink. It's something that's done every day. It takes care of body odor. Amen? It takes care of dirt takes care of paint. Now, I've noticed there are some things that get on you that are harder to clean off than other things. So it is in our life. The righteousness which is of the law is touch not, taste not, handle not. And he says, it sort of works. Kind of keeps you from getting really, really dirty. And as you get older as a Christian, you'll learn you stay away from that, don't do that. And then you don't have to get as dirty. But there's some things, no matter what you do, you're going to get dirty. If you're working on an engine, you're working, you're sweeping the floor. If you can find three specks of dust on the floor. Um, if no matter what it is. Now, what's the righteousness of Christ? Flip, flip over to Philippians. Let me show you this. Stay with me here. Philippians chapter 3. Paul says he wants to be found in him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. In other words, taste, taste not, touch not, handle not. Not that's my own righteousness. 
But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, verse 10 says, that I may know him and the power of his, say it with me, resurrection. What did I tell you this was about? This is a picture of what? His resurrection is death, burial, and resurrection. What is it? It's a washing. What is it? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. He says, I'm not already perfect. But I follow after, stay with me here, if that I may apprehend or I'm arrived, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have arrived. I haven't completed the journey yet. He said, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Are you with me? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is that? Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as we have, as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body the vile body that needs washed, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. What's happening here is the righteousness of Christ comes by washing, by faith. Stick with me here. What's the Bible tell us in 1 John 1, 9? If we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That confession cleanses us and washes us, right? The righteousness which is of God by faith comes from the washing. You're going to get dirty. Remember he washed the disciples' feet? Remember that? Why? You're going to get dirty. Now as you get older and more mature, you learn how to handle the dirt a little better. You might come into the house and take off your shoes so you're not always sweeping the carpet, right? You learn how to do things to keep the dirt from sticking to you. But the, the fact of the matter is you will always have dirt sticking to you because you're in this vile body. So the righteousness, which is of God by faith, comes from constant washing, which is what this is a picture of. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, watch what it says here. Stay with me. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Look at verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by what? By the word. The word of God is the water that builds our faith. Faith cometh by hearing, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God in your life, that's why, that's why some people have a daily devotional reading of their Bible. That's why we go, that's why Jesus said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you say today approaching. We're supposed to gather together for what purpose? To hear the preaching of the word. Why? Because the preaching of the word washes us. Say, I don't know about that. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, what's it say? Let's go there real quick. Same topic, same discussion. 
Paul's talking about baptism, verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Look what it says in verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The foolishness of preaching is one of the things that God uses to wash us. Have you ever sat in a service and you've heard the message and God's just put his finger right in your soul? Ah, I got to fix that. What's he, what's he doing? He uses preaching to clean us. So I don't need preaching. Yes, you do. That's why God gave pastors and evangelists and teachers to the church. Because you need that cleansing. That's what it's about. Are you with me? So how do you live the resurrected life? You live it by constantly cleaning the dirt. It's a constant thing. And getting to the point, mature-wise, mature, mature wise, where you're not always wallowing in the mud. If you wallow in the mud, if you jump in the mud, you get muddy. Does that mean you're not a Christian? No. It means you're muddy. It means you need to wash it off. Get a fresh start again. Interesting. There's two stories in the Bible that talk about pigs and sons. You know the prodigal son, right? The story of the prodigal son? He's the prodigal son. He's a child of God, right? He ends up in the pig pen. He sits around in the pig pen. He's wallowing in the mud. And he says, uh, I don't belong here. Another story is in 2 Peter. He says he returns to his wallowing in the mire like a sow that's been washed. He returns to the wallow. Here's a pig that's not saved. He goes back to the same place, the pig pen. He's gone to the father's house. And the father's house is like, I don't belong here. He goes back to the pig pen. Same lo location is not what the problem is. The problem is the heart hasn't been changed, right? The pig loves it in the muck. The son does not love it in the muck. So what does the son do? He washes and goes into the father's house. What does the pig do? He washes and goes back to the mug. Some of you guys... have never, ever experienced baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't know that when you get saved, God has made you a forever son, forever child of God. That's what eternal life is. If, if eternal life ever stops, it's not eternal, right? You can't lose it. But you can find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit comes to you, that Holy Spirit you've been baptized with, the Holy Spirit you've been sealed with, he comes to you and says, hello, wake up. You're in the wrong place. You need to wash up and get back to the Father's house. Do this if it helps you. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? When, you, when a person chooses to be baptized by water, what they're doing is they're saying publicly, I'm going to live a life where I'm going to trust the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to pay for my sins. I'm going to forget those things that I've done wrong, fix them where I can, put them behind me, not let them define me. And I'm going to keep coming back to the water, confessing, getting myself washed, and going forward until I reach the point where I'm no long, it's no longer necessary, where I can see God face to face and I'll be just like him. That's the resurrected life. Does that make sense? That's what it's about. And if you've never been baptized, there are some that have already told me that they could be baptized. I'm just going to tell you, we got extra towels. If you say, preacher, I want to get baptized, well, come on up. I'll put you under. It's nice and warm outside. We'll usher you right out into the sunshine. Here's the thing. People would come to be baptized publicly all the time saying, you know what? I'm committed to this. I'm going to live my life. Every day I'm going to be washing myself asking God to forgive me of my sins. I'm going to trust him to do that. That's what baptism is about. Are we clear? I hope that helped you. If you want more, to, if you want to know more about that, go back to last week's message on, on, on YouTube, and, and we spent some other time talking about what baptism is not. 
I'd like to spend more time talking about Jesus Christ and his baptism. You'll notice that there was an evidence of something when he came up out of the water. There was evidence of the Holy Spirit on him. And I've noticed this with Christians that have gone ahead and been baptized. I've noticed when they come up out of the water, there's a difference. Suddenly they see, okay, I've made a commitment. Okay, this is what I need to do with my life. I'm choosing to follow Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Christ. And it's a public statement. Does it save them? No. The salvation has already come. They've already believed. Some people wait a while to be baptized. And that's okay. The problem is the river doesn't always come into the platform. So we can't always baptize you in the Jordan. Whenever you want to be baptized, we have to set it up and take it down. So you have to take advantage of it when we got it set up, right? But that baptism won't save you. But it demonstrates to everyone the kind of life you plan to live. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Identifying myself with the baptism of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I'll dismiss the, the baptismal candidates, any of those that are already planning to go. Um, you can slip out the back and get changed and get ready. My wife will meet you back there as well. Um, the rest of you, I would like to challenge you with something. If you're here today and you've never put your trust in Jesus Christ, I want you to understand something. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to go through rituals. You don't have to do anything except believe on him and ask him to save you. That's it. And you can do that from your heart right now. Salvation is a free gift. That means there's no strings attached. There's means there's nothing you have to do to get it except accept it. You understand? The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on him and who they have not believed? If you believe on him, you can call on him. You can call on him right now. If you've never put your trust in Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you something. Don't get confused with touch not, taste not, handle not. Well, this church allows me to do that. That church does not allow me to do that. Don't get messed up in that. That's legalism. Those things we do to try to keep us cleaner, and we all figure out ways to do what we do, the way, the life that we live, the where we live in our lives, how we try to keep ourselves clean from the dirt that's around us. Those are all personal decisions. In this church, I don't spend a lot of time talking about touch not, taste not, handle not. We just find those things and we work on them ourselves. Try to get guidance from the word of God as the Lord shows it to us. If you're here today, you've never, you've never asked him to save you. I'm telling you, I don't know what you're waiting on. Honestly, I don't know what you're waiting on. Why wouldn't you just ask him? The Bible says, whosoever, that's you, that's me. Call upon the name of the Lord. Who's, whoever wants to call on him can call on him. He said, the Lord will in no wise cast out them that come to him. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, come on, I'll give it to you. If you're here and you've never asked him, why don't you write from your heart, reach out. Choose Christ today. So I don't know how to do it. Well, he understands your thoughts. He hears the thoughts of your heart. All you have today to do is, is tell him and ask him. Would you like to ask him? Ask him. Right now, say something like this. Father in heaven, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. Please save me. In Jesus' name. Choose Christ, my friends. If you just prayed that with me, just ask God to save you. Would you lift your hand up so I know no one's looking around? God bless you. Anyone else? If you just prayed that prayer with me just now, you just lift your hand. Let me see it. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? You ask God to save you just now. He does the work in your heart. Those that are being baptized this morning have chosen to follow Christ. They're making a public statement. 
that they are going to live a life washed. Regularly cleansing themselves. They're not saying they're going to be perfect from here on. They're saying that they're going to let God wash them and they're going to trust the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, bless those who have raised their hand. God, help them to understand your word. Anyone here that's under the sound of my voice, may the Holy Spirit put his finger in their soul and help them to hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can look up here. Brother Helm, you got a song to lead us in? 575. Where he leads, I'll follow. Come on up here, lead us in that song. Five seventy five, first and last verse. Would you sing with me? Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dearer far than any message man. baptismal candidates today and we're excited about them does anybody else want to get baptized today out there that I haven't given an opportunity to you've trusted Christ and you haven't had a chance to make it public anybody else besides the children obviously a bunch of them want to jump in here I'm sure it's pretty nice we call this the holy hot tub although it's not hot water so who's going to be first Anna are you going to come up first put a trust in Christ uh, some time ago. I'm trying to think how long ago it's been now. It's been a little bit, a few months. And uh, she wanted to put, she wanted to have this testimony that she's going to follow Christ and live the wash life. Amen? Amen. That's what you want, right? God bless you. We don't want you to lose. Put your hand like that. Hold your nose because I don't want to drown you. All right? (laughs) I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Here I got bucked off a horse recently, so she's failing her arm. So I don't know if I can pull you back up or not. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. 
You guys pray that I can get her back up out of the water. All right. All right. I won't do that one. Okay. So <laughs> she's the only one that talks when I get her in the back. Everyone else is like, I don't want to say anything. Not Sierra. No. Seriously. <laughs> uh, about three years ago, I believe it was, Sierra came to a place in her life where she wanted to put her trust in Christ. She was in. A, I guess she was a child at church. She made a profession when she was little, but when she came, got to be older. She made this decision. And today, she wants to make a, an open testimony that she's going to follow Christ and live live the uh, washed life as a Christian. Amen? So here's a, you don't need to pull that one. I got you. Step forward just a little bit. Plug your nose with that arm, okay? All right. You ready? I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. what I did. Gave my whole life to God. My entire life has been serving him. You need to do the same thing. Misha put her trust in Jesus Christ and she wants to follow the Lord in baptism today. Amen? Okay, now what I want you to do is plug your nose, okay? I promise you. I was just teasing. I'm not going to hold you under. I promise, all right? I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Does baptism make sense to you? Do you understand why we do this? This is a choice we make to live our lives every day, washing ourselves and asking God to forgive us. If you're here today and you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ, and you found yourself in the muck that you shouldn't be in, it's time to clean it up because that's what you committed to do. You committed to ask God to forgive you and to cleanse you. You said, well, I don't know. I've asked him so many times. You know what I found out about God? He means what he says. Every stinking time you get out of a fellowship with God, he'll take you right back, just like the prodigal son's father. When he sees you coming towards him, he'll come running towards you. There's going to come a time when you're going to learn to stay out of the muck because you'll find out it's just not worth getting covered in gas to get rid of the, the gray paint. You're going to find out the gas stinks. It may be the only way to get the gray paint off, but... You'll figure out how to put gloves on and how to keep yourself from getting so dirty. That happens, you younger kids, when you realize as you grow as a Christian, that'll happen. You won't become perfect. You'll never be perfect until we get to see Jesus. But cleanse yourself. Let's bow our heads one more time before we sing. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I'm that Christian you're talking to. The Holy Spirit has put his finger in my heart. I've gotten involved in some things. I've done some things that I'm ashamed of that I shouldn't have done. And uh, this morning, I'm remembering that I need to clean my life up. And I'm going to recommit myself to God again today. And I'm going to ask him to cleanse me today. And I'm going to put that stuff in my rearview mirror. And I'm going to reach forward for what God wants me to be. If that's you today and you say, Preacher, I'm giving you that testimony this morning. Would you lift your hand? All across this room, hands are going up. God's touched your heart in a specific way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for what this baptism means to us. Pray that you bless us and help us never to forget it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want you to sing this song as we're being dismissed. Brother Howam's going to come lead us in the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. We'll sing two verses of I have decided. I have decided. and sing one more verse. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. You are
dismissed.